if you was at the first service, you know that's a lot of information. But I'm not going to be able to go back over uh, the things I did this morning. I can only tell you, when you read Acts 26, 18, you had to receive. Everything you get from God, you just need to receive it. You are in a dispensation of grace, so you can't do nothing to earn it. It won't be grace anymore, okay? All right, so all you must do one word is what? All right, now we're going to show you the Apostle Paul. We're going to show you a lot of more people. And then my, I'm going to show you that also, but I'm going to show you the difference in the Holy Spirit, how they operated in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant, and how I tell you two words. I told you in two words, my subject once again, let me give you that first. Uh, uh, creation, you want to look at it. Let's go to the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Because I'm showing you in Genesis chapter 1, two things happened to Adam. First of all, Adam was created. So you have to be able to see that. And then Adam was formed. We're going to show you two things happened to Adam. Number one, he was what? Created. created. And then number two, he was, he was formed. So in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God. Go to come to your camera, sir. All right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, God, this is really God showing you creation, and he also showed you how he created Adam. The first man who created was Adam, okay? So I'm going to go back and show you. I'm going to show you this morning on the genealogy, but I'm going to actually do it today. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, the heaven and the earth, I'm going to show you. If you go back and check it, be like the Berean Christian. You search the scripture to see what I'm saying is true. There's only two things that two places or two things, people that God created in the Old Covenant, and that's Jerusalem and J Jacob or Israel, okay? That's the only two things was created in the Old Covenant, all right? So what we have to understand, he started off with Adam, and that Adam came out of Adam. All these other ones came out of Adam. But the first man was created was Adam. You're seeing Israel's creation in Genesis. And then you're seeing the, the old creation, that is. And then a new creation was in, in Revelation 21. You saw the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. Why? Because the old creation, the first creation was Adam was the head man. And the new creation, Christ, is the new, new, new head man, right? So you have to understand that. And I said head man because he's the head of the body. All right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 said, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth, see, that's was without form. And I'm going to show you uh, it was without form. They were created, but they had no form. And they were void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, I'm going to show you what that means when I get into the day's teaching. All right, now let's go to Genesis chapter number uh, 1, and let's go and look at verse 26. We st everything in Genesis creation, you don't get to forming until you get to chapter 2. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man. Now, remember, he said, he said. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have the dominion of the fish of the sea or the fowls of the air. All right, verse number uh, 26 says, So God created, see, so you're still in creation. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Well, who, who is that man? Adam, right? We know that by now. All right, and then we're going to go and look at chapter 2, verse 7. He's not only going to create Adam, but he's going to form him. And then I'm going to take you to the genealogy next, and I'm going to show you that in Luke chapter 3. So you'll be able to understand that Jesus Christ is in the genealogy of Adam. So we know Adam had to be the first man created in Israel. That, it just put them together, you know. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed. Now he's already created Adam. Now he formed Adam. He formed man of the dust of the ground, breathing to his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Now here's my point. He did not have the Holy Spirit yet. That's what I want you to see. Now look at the last uh, chapter 4. Uh, chapter 3, I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. Genesis 3, 24. Remember, man was created, man was formed, but he did not have the Holy Spirit. So that's why he formed man, because man will be a vessel of honor. A vessel means a, a, a vessel holds the glory. 
you'll call vessels of glory, vessels of mercy in the, in the new covenant. My wife and family, that verse for me, is called vessels of mercy. I think in the book of Romans. All right, now let's look at this. Uh, verse 24. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden. East at the Garden of Eden. Drove him out because he had eaten of the wrong tree. And the Bible, and the Bible says, and he put a sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So man did never eat of the tree of life. That's my point. Because if he had eaten of the tree of life, the Bible said he would have lived forever. All right, that was right there in verse number 20, uh, uh, 23. He said, therefore, uh, the Lord God sent, sent him from the garden of Eden uh, to till the ground from which he was taken. Verse 22 says, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life, verse 22, and eat and live forever. So that's why you have to take the word of God, eat, live forever. So now the word of God become the image of God. The word of God, that's what God, we talked about this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, told you that in verse 3, 4, 5, 6. We read that this morning, the word of God, the image of God. See, so you get the word when it's preached, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, see? So you, be, you get the word, and what the word does is comes into your heart. It allows the spirit to come into your heart through the word, all right? So you have to understand that's why the word of God is so, so important. And when you receive Christ in your heart, he's the word of God, and now he's going to form the word of God is the image of God. He's going to form the new man in you. All right, that's why it's so important. He, the word comes in as the word, all right, but Christ is the image of God, all right, so you have to put them two together. All right, now let's go show you Galatians 4 19. I'm going to show you Luke while I'm in. in. Let's go to, let, let's do it backwards. Let's show you, well, let's go to Galatians 4 19 first and then, and then go to Luke, because I'm showing you creation, then formation. So you got creation in Genesis, otherwise, Creation come before formation. He created you, then he formed you. And we have to know what he was formed. He was formed for his glory. All right? So you have to know why God created you and formed you, because he wanted to put his glory in you, all right, or in your heart. All right? But he could not do it until he put Christ in you first. We gave this morning, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, Colossians 127, Christ in you, the hope of Glory. See, the Holy Ghost is God's glory. And what God has to do is put his glory in your heart. But he couldn't do that because Jesus said you can't put new wine in old wine skin. Remember? Why? You have to have a new wine skin. That's who Christ is. Then he put the new wine in the new man. All right, you got that? You got to have Christ in your heart first before you can receive the new wine. All right. Now let's go to work. Okay, hold, hold what you got. Let me, let me, let me finish Galatians 4.19 while we're here. Uh, uh, Galatia 4, 4.19. Just going to give you one verse. And then we go to Romans 9.23. All right, Galatia chapter 4 and verse 19. We're on the screen. It says, My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed. Formed, remember, this is why we've been ministering on being saved so long in this ministry. Because our whole reason was so Christ could be formed in you. See, now once Christ is formed, you can receive the Holy Spirit. And I believe we have come to the time in this church where people are ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Am I right about that? All right. You, if it's not you, you don't have to clap. If, if you, you just clap. That's how you do You don't worry about nobody else. A lot of people already think they got it. So you don't worry about them folks. I'm telling you right now. We live in a day, in the day of Jesus Christ, eight people were saved. In the day of Noah, eight people were saved. Now there were more people in the world during the days of Noah as it is today. But only eight people were saved. So you got to understand. See, that's why Jesus came and saved all men. So nobody got to get saved. Let me say it again. You don't have to get saved. You got people say, you come, on over to, come over to our church so you can get saved. You don't have to go nowhere to get saved. Christ saved you on the cross. Now what you're going to need to do is find a man who got the pitcher of water on his head. Okay. 
So Galatians 4, 19, my little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. All right, now we're going to really go and look at this man as we go on with these teachings because we're going to show you that this man have to go through a uh, 36 to 100 fold in his growth. All right, and we're going to show you that because Paul said when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. Yeah, what reason mean understood. So I spake as a child, I thought as a child, then I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, that's what I'm bringing you to. So when you become a man, you, you're going to put away childish things. You're not going to be playing marbles in the, in the backyard no more. All right. All right, let's move on. Now, uh, we're going to go to Romans 9, 23. All right, I'm on my way to my teaching. I'm talking about today creation then formation all right uh, and i'm showing you why romans chapter 9 because god want to put his spirit in you and i'm going to show you in the old testament nobody said nobody nobody, nobody had the spirit in them so you have to understand where i'm going with this that's why i'm trying to show you when it, all these folks talking about baptism with the holy ghost they still did not have the spirit in them they never became sons See, the Spirit of God has two functions. You want to write this down. The Spirit of God function that we learned from the Old Covenant was to make us witnesses. So when you got the Holy Spirit, you become a witness of the resurrection. See, nobody has to tell you that Jesus rose from the dead because you have the Holy Spirit. He has revealed himself to you after he rose from the dead. I'm going to show you how many people got the Holy Spirit, not many. That's what I'm trying to show you. So you need to really get this and learn. And I'm not saying this here to you. I know what I'm talking about. So when you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus has revealed himself to you since he rose from the dead. He has filled you with his spirit. See, if that has not happened, don't lie on the Holy Ghost. That's what happened when the church first opened. People died in the church. See, this is time for your heart to be clear and not try to make anything happen. This, you're dealing with the Holy Spirit here, and you don't want to grieve him. All right, so when I tell you that the Holy Spirit came in my room, the person, see, there's a trinity of the Spirit. He's a person. When the Spirit of God came in my room, I gave you a testimony one time, and I was sitting on the side of my bed. After I got out of work, so I'm going to say at 2 or 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I don't know what time it was. When the Spirit of God came in my room, i never forget, I was facing uh, this way. My bed was long ways. And all of a sudden, I, 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 I discerned, I'm going to say it that way, I don't know my exact words, that, you know, I could, that somebody was in my room. And he began to walk towards me. I was sitting on, on my bed. And he, be, he began to walk towards me. I could see a form walking towards me. Now, I thought I was about to die because I didn't know what to think. No, 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 no kidding. I thought I was about to die. This same person of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to say the Holy Spirit, had already... So you cut it down until you can cut it off. I mean, you know how it work. So the same person had already came in my bedroom. And one day in my bathroom, one day I was in my bathroom, I was facing this way. Again, facing that way. And he stood beside me. First, when he came inside of me, he formed himself in my presence. I heard him when he came in. But then he stood beside me and he formed And I'm going like, what's going on here? He stood beside me. He put his right hand on my left shoulder. And he squeezed it. I don't know if that's why I don't have no help there or what. <laughs> but when he, squeezed, when he squeezed my shoulder, 
I mean, what in the world can you say? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, <laughs> right? And after that, he disappeared. So for him to form himself, it was just like molecules, spirit, more and more and more and more until there's a personality. That's the only way I can explain it. But this time, when he walked in my bedroom, he walked beside me, and God's my witness. When I was sitting here on the side of my bed, I saw him coming to me, and then I tried to keep him from what he was going to do. I didn't know what it was, so I reached out my hand. And God's my witness that he moved my hand, and that's when I realized I, I have no match to what's going on here. I mean, it's just like, it's just like move your hand. And then he came beside me, and he stood over me. Now, he has stood over me more than one time. But this time, he stood over me. This time, he stood within me. When I say over me, I'm talking about through me. And I could feel him standing up in me. And then all of a sudden, like all the air that will leave out of a balloon was, was came inside of me. It was just like, now he was standing over me, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, a, if I can say it this way, Lord, forgive me, because I have no other way to say it, a genie in a bottle. And all of a sudden, it went, with the greatest force that I ever heard in my life, went inside of me. Some of you probably heard me told this before. But it was just like, I mean, 10 times that. And it was so powerful until I passed out. It was so powerful until I could not receive it all. It was like, <laughs> and I went out. And I finally got back in the bed. Now my wife, we were talking all this time, and I've been trying to get her, and she was snoring. So I read the Lord made sure it wasn't going to be no honest sister crump this time. And I, I was trying to tell her, and I'm reaching the bed, I'm trying to get in the bed. I, I don't know what time I got in the bed. I finally got in the bed, and I laid on the side of, on my side. And every now and then I would feel out there and seek, and I feel I could feel the presence of the Lord so thick until I know he was still there. Well, that presence of the Lord is what's on my life. I don't say that to... What I mean by that is when, you, when you're filled with the Spirit, you become a witness of the resurrection. That means you have now met the resurrected Savior in some way. When he fills you with the Spirit, he comes to live in you. So don't settle for an imitation. We're talking about the Spirit himself come to take up residence in you. And all through the rest of your life, it's like you are living in heaven now. It is, I, I wish I could say it in a way until you would desire, until you would want this more than anything in your life. There have been many times I said to my wife, the Spirit of God is standing in our midst, and I just weep. Both of us just weep because we, we feel the presence of the Lord just that sensitive. The Spirit of the Lord lives with us. We live with him. This is not like a sudden experience. I lay in my bed at night, and God is my witness I know when he walks in my room. And I just sit there until he just comes all up on me. That's, that's what I'm wanting you to experience. I want this for you. I don't want you to have, I don't want you to have an invitation. The Holy Ghost makes you a witness of the resurrection of Christ. This is not a game. 
And I wouldn't be up here saying this. I'm off my message, so I got to get back on my message here. But I have to share a little bit. All right, I gave you Romans 23, 9, 23, and I didn't get there. Romans chapter 9, verse 23. Let's go back to the screen. Romans 9, 23 says, oh, you're going to give you, you have two vessels. You got the vessel of destruction, verse 22. Verse 23 saying that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. See, you become a vessel which he has a full prepared, watch this, unto glory. So you got to understand, for God to prepare you as a vessel is to fill you with glory. Glory is the Holy Spirit. See, I can hear the Holy Spirit. When you start talking about the Holy Spirit, you now can hear the Holy Spirit as a wind blowing through the place. See, that's why I had Sister Jatan one week to saying, never alone. You, you gotta, you're going to come to a place in your life where you want to be by yourself. You know, it's just like people saying, oh, I hate being by myself. No, once you've been filled with the Spirit, you want to be by yourself. Because the Spirit of God can be grieved. He can be turned off by people by people with attitudes especially. He can be turned on. That's why so many people don't receive the Holy Ghost. They got nasty attitudes. He, you grieves him. I'm going to do a teaching about chapter 12, 2 Corinthians, verse 9. I'm not going there now. God's grace is sufficient. And I'm going to show you how he gives and why he gives more grace. How do I keep giving more, getting more grace? I must become more humble. If you can't become more humble, you cannot, you don't qualify for more grace. And humility just not come, just not just come because you want to be. So that's, that's going to be a, a teaching that's coming your way. All right, so I got to go to work here. Hope you're enjoying who I am. All right, now let's go to the Gospel of St. Luke. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to Acts 1 first. I, I waste, I, I'm not, not going to use the word wasted, but I use some of my time to do that for you because I want you to, to know the Holy Ghost is a person. It's not just you have an experience. Of course, you will have an experience in more than one. I mean, he is so real to me as you are. I'm here all day on a Saturday, and I, and I come because I just want to be in his presence. I love for him teaching me his word. I come on Sunday morning before the day break because I want to be here with him. So that's why I do, that's why I do that. And he teaches me every time. The other time he just calls me to away, come away. Whether it's in my bathroom or wherever, and I just go to be with him. Sometimes I get in my car and drive, don't know where I'm going. I just want to be with the Lord. And boy, I'm gonna tell you, he just fills the car with his glory. I love that. I said, I love that kind of thing. <laughs> Acts chapter one. Acts chapter 1. Now watch what it says in verse 6 through 8. We're going to go there. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 says, When they therefore will come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the season when the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost, watch the language here, it's come up on you. When the Holy Ghost comes up on you, he comes up on you to witness. So I want you to write that down. This is very, very important for your life. The Holy Ghost does not come up on you to make you a son. The 
The Holy Ghost comes up on you to make you a witness of his power, that he is God. He comes in you to make you a son. So you can have the Holy Ghost up on you just like Samson did, just like all the people in the Bible did, but that did not make them a son. That's why you got to understand what the difference in hearing somebody talking about, I can feel the Holy Ghost. You can feel the Holy Ghost. That's true, but that don't mean you're a son. You can speak in tongues, but that don't mean you're a son. The Holy Ghost can come up on you for service. These people in the Old Testament, these people I'm talking about now, they, the Holy Ghost came up on them and they spake with tongues in other men's languages. That don't mean they were God's children. They were witnesses. Acts chapter 1. But you shall receive power, verse 8. After that, the Holy Ghost has come up on you. You need to underline the word, come up on you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Holy Ghost comes up on you for what reason? To make you what? A witness. Just like when I minister the word of God, the Holy Ghost comes up on me. He came up on me just before I came out here. But it's for the minister. Always the grace of God on your life is for service. The Holy Ghost is what? Is who? He's the grace of God on your life for service. So anytime you feel the Spirit of God upon you, it's for service. It's, it's to witness. It's to minister. But only the Spirit of God in you is for relationship. It's for sonship. And I don't want you to do, mis, misunderstand I got the Spirit on me and I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Let me show you the Apostle Paul's life. The 1 Corinthians chapter 15 And verse 10, just one verse. Come back to your camera, sir. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed up on me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. This is not grace that's in you, it's with you. God is with you. His grace is upon you. He is saying to you, I am with you. You can do this, Crump. I'm with you. See, that's what he told the people in Matthew. Lo, I'm with you. Let's go to it, Matthew 28. And what people mistake is with you than in you. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, we're going to go down to verse 16. After he rose from the dead, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where they, Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go into all the world and teach all nations. Now we know what that is, teach all Israel. Because we show you that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 23. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He's not telling you to go to all, all out here in the world. He's talking about in Israel. Matthew 10, 23 says, You would not have gone over the cities of Israel until the Son of Man be come. All right. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them, watch what you're teaching them, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Well, we don't follow what Jesus commanded. We follow what, Peter, what the Holy Ghost commanded. He did, he did that through Paul. See, if you're still teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you're not in the new covenant yet. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. I am with you. That's grace, even to the end of the world. So he was with them. You go all the way through Paul's ministry, you'll see that he was with Paul. 
told Paul, be of good cheer. I'm with you, Paul. No man going to hurt you, Paul. I'm with you. That's what the grace is for. That's grace on your life. That don't mean you're saved. I mean, that don't mean you're born. Uh, that don't mean you have a spirit. All right, let's move on. Anything else I got out there? Because I'm getting ready to shoot out a cannon here. Go, let's go to a... Uh, Uh, Luke, I said, I, did I cover the Luke? Uh, anything else? Huh? Luke chapter 3? I don't know why I said that. So let's go. I won't bother that yet. I got to go back and see. If, huh? Oh, I did the genealogy. Now, 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 now that helps me. <laughs> right. I have no idea why I said Luke 3. All right. Luke chapter 3, if you start reading verse 23, which we're which we going to do one verse, and then I'm going to go all the way down to verse 38. You can read the rest yourself. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. This is when I came into the ministry when I was 30. Jesus himself, and I didn't say I'm Jesus, okay? I don't know about to get that wrong. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as opposed the son of Joseph, which was a son of Eli. All right, now if you go down to the last verse, verse 38, you'll see where the beginning is. Now he goes all the way to Jesus, he's going backwards. He backing all the way back up to the son of God, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth. Seth was one of... Uh, Adam's sons, you got the third son. You got Cain, Abel, and Seth, all right? Which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Now, my point is, if, if the genealogy goes all the way back to Adam, you got to know that the Bible is about the creation of Adam, right, and Eve. Got to be the creation of Israel. All right, all right, whatever. You, you, I, all I can do is give it to you. you. You can go by the other stuff the other folks say, or you can believe the Bible. All right, now let's go to the book of, uh, let's, go, let's go all the way back to Zechariah. Let me go back there. Uh, let me do one in Joel. Let me go Joel and then Zechariah. I'm going to go quickly because I don't have but 25 minutes. Go back to the book of Joel. Joel, you got to go back to Daniel and go forward. All right. Uh, we're going to look at Joel chapter 2, verse 28. You got, you got Daniel, Hosea, Joel, the, those books, okay? Joel chapter 2, verse 28 says, and, I, and it will come to pass, now this is what I'm going to read in Acts chapter 2. And it will come to pass afterwards, afterwards, talking about after his death, then resurrection, that I will pour out of my spirit, watch what he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Say, say, pour out my spirit up on all flesh. Come on, say it again. He said, I will pour out my spirit up on all flesh. All right, now let's go show you that in Acts chapter, let's go to Zechariah 12, 10 first. Let's go, you're going to Zechariah, you got to have, Zechariah is like two books before, or the last book before Matthew. So you got to see, if you go to Matthew and bag up, you get to, you get to Malachi and Zechariah. That's how well you ought to know your Bible, right? Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. All of that Zechariah told you what happened when Jesus came back to them. In verse 10, it says, And I will pour out, I'm sorry, I will pour up on the house of David. I will pour up on. Always I will pour up on the house of David and up on the inhabitants of Jerusalem. See, it's only two. That's why you have heaven and earth. I will pour out upon the house of David, upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Watch this. The spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication. And they shall look upon me, not you, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourn for his only son. All right, so that's, that's why you have to read, know the word. All right, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, 1 through 4, and verse 17. The book of Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts was written by Luke. Same man wrote you the book of Luke, wrote you the book of Acts. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And then I said, I'm going to do another verse there. 17, right? Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Are you enjoying the word so far? All right, verse, verse 1, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all at one accord at one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and watch this, it filled the house where they were sitting. And they, they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and these cloven tongues like as a fire sat up on each of them. Set up on. The Spirit came up on each of them. That was only for service, not relationship. That don't mean they were sons. All right. And, and watch this. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's what gets people, the word feel. This word feel here means to control. Occupy your life. See? control your life. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it like you go inside. God didn't put the Holy Ghost on you to fill you. He put the Holy Ghost in you to fill you. The responsibility of the Holy Ghost in you is to keep your soul watered. How do I know that? Because John told me, John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, 39, in the last day, that great day of the feast, put it on the screen if you got it, John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, 39, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and said, if any man thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, of living waters, rivers of, rivers of living water is the word. That's why you don't have to worry about the word. I'm waiting for you to find that. That's John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, 39. John chapter 7, there it is. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has says, out of his belly shall flow, out of his belly going to flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit that they that believe on him should receive. Because the Holy Ghost was not yet given. See, the Holy Ghost is given. That's why you can only thing you can do is what? It's receive it. Right. All right. All right. Now let's go on. I gave you Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. The Holy Ghost set up on each one of them. Go to verse 17. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God. I'm giving you the same thing that I gave you in Joel. Uh, chapter 2, verse 38. See, so many people are basing their salvation on an experience that they've had with the Holy Ghost. We're waiting on the screen. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Remember, I'm, you're never waiting on me. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. It came to pass in the last day, saith God, I would pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That's all you're going to get. It's the spirit of on you. That's grace. Grace is always to make you witness. Grace is always for service. So you always understand when you're going to serve God, you need to always pray and thank God to give you more grace up on you. That's for service. All right. So that's what he says. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The sons and the daughters are going to prophesy. Young men are going to see visions. Old men are going to dream dreams. On my servants, on my handmaid, I will pour in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And that's what you hear people saying. See, the Lord, I'm, I'm a prophet. I'm supposed to be prophesying. Well, you got a spirit upon you. Now, either you're a false prophet or you're what, but it don't mean you're saved. You don't, you're not born of the, you don't have the Holy Ghost unless the spirit will come in you. That's what you got to understand. Don't be deceived. You got a whole lot of folk out there tell you, man, you pray in tongue. If you don't pray in tongue, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. See, that's what they teach that church. How do you think I know? I know. Been there and done that. Acts chapter 6, verse 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 6. We're just going to walk through the book of Acts. They had these people to get ready to send into ministry. What did they do in verse 6? Whom they set before the apostles 
When they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. One day I'm going to do my son, Earl, right here one day. And his wife. I see his wife on the front row there, his daughter, her daughter. One of the days I'm going to call him up here and I'm going to lay my hands on him. And uh, he wanted to worry about me, the way it was with me. When they laid their hands on me, I ran wild in the wilderness. <laughs> to lay hands on does not put the spirit in you. See, that's why I'm not asking you to come up here. Because I'm not, I don't, if I lay my hands on you, it's always for what? Service. So you got to understand something. All right. And when they set, they set the apostles before them, they, they prayed, they laid their hands on them. And we're going to find out why they did that. And the Bible said the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great number of the priests was obedient to the faith. Now let's go to chapter 8, verse 17. Show you another one. We go to 8, 17. We go to 19, 1 through 6. 8, 17. If I'm passing it, I'll come back. Acts chapter 8, verse 17. All right, verse 14. Back into verse 14, I'm sorry. Same chapter 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria watched that they had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, whom when they were come down, they prayed for them, Peter and John, remember that, they, that they may receive the Holy Ghost. And that's what people think. They think that you can have a service, and at this service, we're going to receive the Holy Ghost. You only can receive the Holy Ghost for service by the laying of the hands. All right, and I'm going to show you in the Word of God. It says, when they will come down, they pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen up on none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost is for what? Service. Service. All right, now let's go to the book of Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse... Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. It came to pass while that Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. Finding certain disciples, he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? See, that's where a lot of pastors preach. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They are thinking when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're talking about inside to be saved. No, he's not talking about it. He's still talking about outside. He said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as whether we have, uh, whether there be in the Holy Ghost. And he said to them, and to what then were you baptized? This is what most of the church, churches teach in the apostolic doctrine. And they said unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which shall come after, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is what most apostolic doctrine teaches right here. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake in tongues and prophesied. And verse 7 says, And all the men was about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing persuading the thing concerning the kingdom of God. What doctrine were they preaching? The kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom. See, that's not the gospel of grace. And I just told you I'm going to lay my hands on my son. I want to clarify this. I'm not laying my hands on my son to receive the Holy Ghost. See, you got to understand something. Uh, let me show you a verse in Hebrew chapter 6. Laying hands for people to receive the Holy Ghost went out with the Old Covenant. Hebrew chapter 6. Because if you got the Holy Ghost in you, you become a son. You don't need nobody to anoint you from the outside no more. Oh, going with I'm going with the Lord. 
I gave you a verse this morning. Let's do Hebrew chapter number 6, verse 1. I'm going to take you back to that verse. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 21, 22. I'm going to show you something. See, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you no more because you have the Holy Ghost inside of you. See, that's what they did. You don't see, after I finish, you don't see people laying hands on nobody no more. That's in the book of Acts. That's what Israel did. It was for service. You laid hands because they couldn't get the Holy Ghost on the inside. They had to lay hands on them for a witness, to be a witness of the resurrection and to be of service. Once you get in the, whole, once you get in the new covenant, you become a son. You don't have to be worried about getting nobody approval for nothing else. You got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. I know all y'all can't clap. That's all right. You understand. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. See, this is why I want to clarify when I say I'm going to lay my hands on them. I'm not doing it for them to receive the Holy Ghost. That's why I'm sitting down up here. The reason why I'm sitting down, I want the Holy Ghost to be more involved in this church. I want to do like John says. I want to decrease. And I want him to increase. See, I know the power of God on my life. I can, I can have people that stand up in this church. I've done it all my life who had pain in their body. I can tell you the pain gone and you sit down. I know the power on my life. But I'm not here for me. I want you to be a part of what, enjoy what I'm enjoying. I don't want to have to do all of this myself. I want you to have the, have the faith of the Son of God. I want you to be able to use your faith. And I want you to be able to know I know my pastor. He taught us well. And I know of anything come in my life. I got the Holy Ghost. You don't have Pastor Crump, but you got the Holy Ghost. And he's a person. Before Jesus left his disciples, he taught them about the Holy Ghost. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you about for a while. Because I don't want you to have to depend on me. That's why Jesus talked to his disciples. I'm going away. I'm going away. I can only be with you on a daily basis. But when the Holy Ghost comes, he can be with you 24-7. See, I want you to want him. I want you to want him. I want you to talk to him in the morning before you leave. I want you to tell him all about your situation. I don't want you to worry no more. I want you to know that you don't have to be stressed out no more. You don't have to be worried no more. You have the Godhead of the Holy Ghost in you. You got God himself living inside of you. And you will never, never, never be alone again. Never. You're just going to have to spend time with him, love him, obey him, submit yourself to him. And you got to understand, there'll be things that come in your life to see, do you still have an attitude? So you can tell God, oh, oh, I'm humble, Lord. I'm so humble. And God let one of the situations come in your life, you say, look, you went from humility Let's move on. Hebrew chapter 6. I thought you got rid of that anger crump. Hebrew chapter 6. I'm not calling your name, calling my name. Hebrew chapter 6. Therefore leaving. So you come down to a place in Christ when Christ become mature in your life. When I was a child, I act like a child. I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, we're talking about spiritual maturity. I put away spiritual things. And he's talking about the thing that the church had in the beginning. Huh? I put away childish things. He's talking about the thing that the church did in the beginning. And that's what churches are doing. Hey, uh, I thought about how you pray in tongues. Put away the childish thing. Let me see how you live. Walk before me, Abraham. See, those were the ch childish things that the churches did in the beginning. But God wants to interest in your walk. 
Walk before me and be thou perfect. Be thou consistent every day. See, don't just be a Christian today, but every day, seven days a week. You got to come to a time in your life where you're going to have to stop hanging out with the boys and hanging out with the girls. You know, we, we, you know the, girls just, we, we, the girls just hanging out this week. Is that right? So you still want the childish stuff. It's time for you to grow up. You gotta, it's time for you to find out what your assignment, what God got for your life. Stop playing with the toys. You got to go over and play marbles every weekend. Therefore, leaving the principles, the elementary teachings of the doctrine of Christ, let, let, let us go on to perfection. That's what he's talking about. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Not laying again repentance from dead works. Not laying again faith towards God. Not laying again the doctrine of baptism. See, this is all the church has been arguing about. That's why Paul says, when I was a child, I spake of the child. This is what he's talking about. Or the doctrine of baptism, laying on the hands. Laying on the hands, I thought we were supposed to do that. No, they did that for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Laying on the hands did not lead you if you have the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing is not going nowhere. The gifts of laying on the hands. See, I can lay my hands on you. You can be healed in the name of Jesus. That, that's don't go away. He's talking about to receive the Holy Spirit. You don't have to lay hands on nobody to receive the Holy Ghost. That changed. You preach the gospel now. The gospel, the power of God, the salvation to every man that believes. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. After you trust it, after you've heard, you believe, then you receive the Holy Spirit. It's not by laying on hands no more. So you got to don't be deceived. Don't end up in somebody lying. Somebody got your head all bowed down. You're trying to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 uh. And then they turn around and tell you, just, just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, we've seen it all. I had a man tell me at, the line, in a, in a, at my workplace at Pontiac Motors. He said, you come over here behind this machine. I'll make sure you get the Holy Ghost. And I said, I know you probably will, brother. That's what he told me. He said, you just come over here behind him and say, and then I said, well, how you do it, man? I put a dime on your tongue, boy, and I tell you to say thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you. And you keep on. And you, I said, yeah, and I swallowed that dime. <laughs> you don't get no Holy Ghost putting no dime on your tongue. Stop being a fool. You got all kind of stupid stuff out there that people call being saved. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm in the building. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't want to raise your hand, but you heard it before. People tell you, come over here, you can get the Holy Ghost. And then they're talking about, you gotta, you, this is a famous one here. Because a lot of them mothers, they'll gang you around, put you in the middle. They'll tell you, you ain't getting out this ring until you start to pick it in tongues. Come on now, I'm trying to show you all that stuff wasn't nothing but religion and tradition of men. And a lot of you came out of that thing, but you don't want to understand, you're not going back. Never. But you know about it, they'll put their whole hand like this here. They all get around, all of them get around. And they started speaking in tongues, and you get in the middle, you don't know what to do. And they'd be like, come on, girl, come on. Come on, come on, thank him, come on. And you fall all out in the flow, slob all over your face, everything. And then you say, you, you get it? I got something. <laughs> you right, you got something. <laughs> you, got, you did get something, but it wasn't no Holy Spirit. <laughs> See, that's the, that's the kind of stuff people are doing in churches today. Had never changed, same stuff. You don't have to do it at the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is hear the gospel preach, believe the gospel, Receive, your, receive forgiveness of sin that God already told you, Acts 26, 18, and then receive the Holy Ghost. Just so simple. See, I'm so glad that God did that. I just told the Lord one day, I want to receive the Holy Ghost, and that's what he did. I put my Bible in my pocket one day, and I told the Lord, I said, I'm not going to do the things I, re I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I don't have the Holy Spirit. And I was a preacher. I was the pastor and had never prayed in the spirit. 
And I got in my car one day and I went away. And I thought I had to pray in the Spirit. Because I understand praying in the Spirit. I understand it's, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. I want everything the Holy Spirit would have for me. But it's not about that. It's about Him. He is the greatest gift God has for you. Amen. Let me say it. I know, I know you got... See, I know the Bible said, I know the Bible said three, 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 three things never end. What, what are they? Faith, hope. Faith, hope and what? Love. Well, love is God. And I'm going to say it this way. Not just the Father, not just the Son, but the Holy Ghost. That's who love is. So once you get the Holy Ghost, listen, he'll never leave you. The greatest of all gifts is God himself. So when God gives you the Holy Ghost, see, you, don't, you, 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 wanna, you wanna make sure your desire is for him. Oh God, let me move on. I got, I got a, my time is going here. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 10, and let's show you something we're gonna end. Here's Peter. Oh, I, okay, 2 Corinthians 1, 20, I told you I'm gonna show you that again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, I'm going to need about five minutes back there. You set my clock. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Watch what this word of God says. It says, all the promises of God in Christ is yes in him. Amen. Unto the glory of God the Father by us. Then I showed you everything God has done for us. You want to underline in your Bible. In verse number 21. Now we, he who establishes us. See, this is what, what God does. He establishes you with Christ. Paul said, he established us with you in Christ. Then he began to name what he's done for us. He has anointed us. Now I need you to put this on the screen. I need the tape on the screen when I'm ministering. I got to have them on the screen. All right. So verse 21 says, he has anointed us. So you want to make sure you got to understand that God has, it's his, his responsibility since you have the Holy Ghost. You cannot get established until you get the Holy Spirit. We're still waiting on the screen. I'm waiting on the screen because I got to have this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21 is where we're at now. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. Okay. I got to move on. Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Verse 22 who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So you got that now back at the verse 21, for they can see it on the screen. Verse 21 says, Now he who has established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. He has, past tense, see? See, so you're already anointed. See, I used to carry oil. I used to have oil sitting right over there, big bottle of oil. And the Holy Ghost said to me, What is that for? And I said, that's the anointing oil, Lord. Don't you know? <laughs> Lord said, well, I'm the anointing. As a matter of fact, that's what the name Christ means, isn't it? The anointing one? I said, yes, Lord. He said, what do you need that for? Oh. I thought I was supposed to anoint my hands before I touch people. He said, you are anointed. Look at somebody say, if, if Christ is in you, you are anointed. Right, you are anointed. As a matter of fact, you are the body of Christ. You are the anointed one. Who sealed us and has given us the honest of the spirit. All right, that's the Holy Ghost. I want you to do that. I only got two minutes. I got to go. Acts chapter number 10 and verse 44. I, I, I can't read all this, but I want you to read this. Acts chapter 10. And I, I, this, when you read it, I want you to start all the way up to the beginning, verse 34. And Peter's going to begin to preach. He's going to preach 38. Let's start at verse 38. Acts chapter 10. Peter's preaching. In verse 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost. He's telling you who, what the anointing is. Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost, not with oil. With the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are... All witnesses, once again, of these things, which he did in both the land of the Jews in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on the tree. 
him God raised up the third day and showed him opening. Now watch what happened when he's preaching this now. Not to all the people, but unto all witnesses chosen before God, even us, because that's who they were witnesses. Who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach, watch this, unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And to give, and to give all the prophets witnesses that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall not, if they believed on him, they shall receive, watch this, the forgiveness of sin. The word remission means forgiveness. If they believed on him, see, see if they believed on him, they receive what? Forgiveness of sin. All you have to do is believe Christ died, buried, and raised again from the dead and receive what? Can you see the difference? You believe Christ's death, buried, and resurrection, then you receive forgiveness of sin, then you get to receive your inheritance. All right? So they, they had to believe in his name. That's not your salvation. They had to believe in his name that whoever believed in his name shall receive remission of sin. Why Peter spake these things? See, this, this is what I want to have in this minute. Why Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which what? Heard the word. So you didn't, they, if you notice, they didn't have to lay hands on nobody no more. Come on now, did you get that? I showed you that first, but you didn't understand. Now you see how it progressed? When they heard Peter preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that what? Heard the word. So that's how you receive the Holy Ghost. You don't have to lay hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit anymore. You just preach the word and the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word. It's the same way as people get re receiving Christ in their heart. When you preach Christ, the Holy Ghost will just move in the church. All right. I want to show you that because that's something you're going to do. Now, I'll show you one more. Acts chapter 11 and verse 16. We're done. Acts chapter 11. Well, I got another one I got to show you briefly. It's going to be one verse, though. 1 Peter 4, 14. Uh, Acts 11, 16, 1 Peter 4, 14. We're done. Acts chapter 11 and verse 16. It said, then Peter remembered. Watch what, what it says. He said, I, Peter said in verse 15, as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as he did on us as the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them, God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was it that I shall withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and they glorified God saying, then has God also to the Gentile granted repentance unto life. See, they, the, the Gentile, they did not have to lay hands on them. When they preached, the Holy Ghost just fell on the Gentile. All right, one more verse. 1 Peter 4, 14, I'm done. When you find that, stand up on your feet. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14. So you tell this to people, and you know what they do? You just believe all that stuff Pastor Crump said. And I read it all out the Bible. Isn't that something? Read it all out the Bible, and the first thing they said, oh, you just believe all that stuff Pastor Crump said. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14. Watch what Peter say. When you find it, when you find that, stand up on your feet. Paul, Peter said, if you be reproached, talking to, the, talking to the Hebrews, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. What happened when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit? The spirit of glory and the spirit of God rests upon you. See, you got to understand that. That's why when I do the Apostle Paul ministry in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, when I talk about Paul, and if you keep going, he was talking about when he go through different things, the Spirit of God rests upon you. So you have to understand when you're going through your weakness, the Spirit of God always will come and just rest upon you. Now, why is he doing that? To strengthen you. So when you read 2 Corinthians 12, you understand. That's why Paul said, I will wear the glory in my infirmities. So the power of Christ may what? Rest upon me. Get the Lord a great big head. Now, what I, what, I want to do, what I want to do now is I want to talk to the camera. Now, I will talk to you while I'm in here. I want you to really listen to what I'm saying 
Because I gave you Acts chapter 26, remember? And I told you two things that had to happen. They had to happen. If they had to, they said this here in Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. They said that uh, uh, Paul ministry, and Paul ministry was to preach the gospel of Christ. When he preached the gospel of Christ, he would open the eyes of the blind, turn them from dark to light, turn them from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive. Number one, what? Forgiveness of sin. So what I'm going to say to this camera is the same thing I'm saying to you. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, it's because, number one, you have not believed the gospel. Number two, you have not. When I say you have not believed the gospel, you have not received forgiveness of sins. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm, gonna sh I'm getting ready to read now, Christ died for your sins. See, you already died for your sins. So if you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, you've got to receive forgiveness of sins. And then you can receive the Holy Spirit. He cannot live in your house unless your sins have been forgiven. Now, he's already died and paid for them, but you've got to receive it. How many know what I just said? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received. And that's all he said for you to do in one word, receive. And when you stand by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. I delivered on you, first of all, that which I also received. That's all he did, we received. What did he receive, Paul? How Christ died for our sins. Say, I believe Christ died for my sin. I believe Christ was buried in my grave. And I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. So now I receive, first of all, forgiveness of sins. Say, Christ already paid for for my sin. I don't have to every day thank him. I'm sorry, I don't have to every day ask him to forgive me of my sins. I thank him now, every day of my life, for forgiving me and washing away my sin. I am sanctified by the precious blood of Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Christ has qualified me to receive the Holy Spirit. So I lift my hands to my Father and I receive His precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come live in my heart forever. And I thank Him for it.